how to ethically kill a turtle. At the beginning of my project, I would have never thought I would ever type something like this into Google until it became relevant. So this little fella here and this tiny seed I have here in my hand have something in common. They are a threat to our biodiversity and they are both edible. That is why I created a menu from the new wild, a menu from four different invasive species. Uh, my name is Alex and I'm a designer working at the intersection of humans, culture, nature and technology. And I'm especially interested in the sociopolitical implications of the Anthropocene, the era we as human race are altering our planet in a severe manner. So I called it Menu from the New Wild because our ecosystems and natural environments are changing. They have been changing ever since, very slowly. The only difference now is that they're changing in a severely accelerated way through our behavior of production and consumption. And in some fields, we're already uh, kind of reaching our planetary boundaries, for example, in the loss of biodiversity. Those four very rare plant and animal species are some of the many which are on the red list of species threatened by extinction. They are sensitive breeds and mostly um, very used to the habitats they live in. So they're not flexible in moving somewhere else to survive. Um, they are mainly endangered by uh, human influences, but also directly or indirectly threatened by those invasive species. These are not usually found in our natural, old, pristine nature. Um, and they have very resistive abilities and are very competitive. Um, and since the Industrial Revolution, uh, we spread them through our mobility and trade, and now they flourish within the conditions of climate change. Um, so take as an example uh, the raccoon. The raccoon was brought to Europe in times when long hair fur was still in fashion. Um, as breeding them was cheaper than importing the fur. But of course, some of them escaped from the farms into the wilderness. And there it doesn't have natural enemies an anymore. So uh, no regulating counterpart. Uh, as a food source, the raccoon plunders the nests of ground nesting birds like the little ringed plover, a highly endangered bird species which is, as I said, very used to the habitat it lives in. Um, yes. <laughs> so for me, the question was, like, how do we strategically want to deal with those changes in the future in our ecosystems and natural environment? Do we fear them or do we embrace them? Do maybe we have to adapt to those new and changing conditions? So one important question for my project was how could I make this issue and this topic interesting for people to engage with and empower them to take an active position. Uh, I discovered that mostly uh, action in the field of invasive species is only taken in commercially relevant areas. So I propose what if we make them commercially relevant while simultaneously reducing their numbers in favor of our biodiversity. So. My central question is, do we have to change our paradigms of consumption if we want to protect what we call our pristine nature? So in my future scenario, soup from the invasive pond slider turtle, a roasted raccoon with shoots from Japanese knotweed, and seeds on cream from Himalayan balsam appear on our menu. To test my proposal, I chose this three-course menu and the dining experience around it as a playful, tangible, experiential medium for to enable people to reflect also on the implications of their uh, consumption habits. And for this, I created special tableware, and it works like this. By eating r the invasive raccoon and Japanese not, free, uh, not, not wheat from your plate and uh, therefore reducing it, other species which are endangered by them uh, will appear again on the plate. 
So while eating, you experience the balancing effect your consumption has on our ecosystems. So in this case, it's this very rare bird and butterfly species. Um, on the back side of the plate, uh, you can discover information about those endangered species you're supporting. And uh, because this topic is ambiguous and not just black and white, I also included some stimulators in, in the form of provocative questions I hid inside the napkins. Um, to test how my plans would turn out, I invited a diversity of people who didn't know anything about the project for an experimental dinner. Uh, and I will share some glimpses of the conversations and, and discussions around the table with you. So some thought that those species could provide a sustainable alternative to industrially pr produced meat, for example, uh, but also considered the cultural barriers we would have to overcome when eating those. For example, in Middle Europe, we eat beef, chicken or pork meat on a regular basis, which is rationally seen not more or less ethical than eating raccoon or turtle, except that mostly raccoon and turtles even had a life, a nice life in the wilderness. Uh, also interesting uh, and, and a highly discussed term was the term natural. And what is even natural in our era where we nearly cultivate every piece of land and where the so, so many things are artificially shaped. And also the question if we even want to go back to a former, more natural state. Uh, finally, uh, interesting to see that was that those small interventions triggered al also the consciousness for some of those species and their ecological relations. So this dinner and the objects and interactions I created around it was a tool to provoke people to think, uh, to think about this topic and explore the ambiguities and different shades themselves. Uh, but I, and, and maybe even start to rethink their own paradigms of consumption. But I also wanted to provide a serious proposal and applicable strategy for a broad audience where many people can participate. So just to make it clear, um, the concept is not about the extinction of those species, of those invasive species, because that's anyways not possible anymore. It is more about us taking responsibility for their introduction and now as, as, humans, as human beings taking an, a balancing and regulating part in our ecosystems. So on my journey of uh, researching, harvesting and collecting those species, I often felt more like a journalist than a designer. Many people ask me if I'm a biologist and why an industrial designer is working with invasive species. I find this perception perception very interesting because I see the future of design or my future, my role as a future designer uh, as inevitably multidisciplinary. I think in order to understand complex relations, uh, it's highly necessary to dive into different other contexts. Uh, on the one hand, to experience uh, different perspectives, but also to provide challenging perspectives within those other spheres. I think professional boundaries need to blur. Um, so, uh, at some point of my creative process, I nearly reached my own ethical boundaries. Those are, for example, tools I created to process and prepare turtle meat. Um, but it was also necessary to prove that those barriers are mostly shaped through our cultural context and that they are well worth rethinking. So, finally, um, I hope you will enjoy the seeds and jam from the Himalayan balsam, which is a very invasive plant. Uh, I'm talking from a middle European perspective, uh, which will be served over there at the tasting corner. You can try some later after the presentations. Uh, this plant has a highly uh, effective seed dispersal mechanism. Uh, it can shoot its seeds uh, as wide as five meters. So it's very uh, reproductive also through waterways. So by eating them, you contribute to protect or support Austria's biodiversity because I imported them. It's quite dangerous. <laughs> uh, so thank you for that. And if you want to try out some recipes or want to know more about the other species, I have some info over there. You can drop me a line. Um, 
Yes, thank you very much and enjoy.